Vector autoregressions are possibly the most important or popular tool in modern macroeconomic analysis. However, classical VAR modeling requires all variables in the VAR to be of the same frequency. All variables must be monthly, or all must be quarterly, etc. This single frequency requirement is generally not met by the data themselves. Macroeconomic researchers are typically faced with variables of different frequencies. The traditional solution to mixed frequency estimation uses frequency conversion methods to convert the high frequency variables to the lowest frequency in the VAR. This aggregation leads to a loss of information as multiple observations are combined into a single data point. In univariate models, an alternative solution has been to use MIDAS estimation, which creates multiple low frequency variables for each high frequency variable, allowing retention of high frequency fidelity. Univariate MIDAS was introduced into eViews with version 9.5 and has proved incredibly popular. In VAR models, different approaches to alleviate the data aggregation problem have recently become popular. There are three broad categories of method for estimating these mixed frequency VARs. The state space approaches such as Shorefider and Song 2013, the U-MIDAS approach as outlined in Geisel's 2016, and the MIDAS with polynomial weights approach also outlined in Geisel's 2016. EVs 11 offers support for the unweighted U-MIDAS approach which has been expanded to include both Bayesian and classical VARVA techniques. To demonstrate, we have a work file containing US macroeconomic data from 1949 to 2011. We have two pages, one containing quarterly GDP, and one containing monthly data for inflation, industrial production, and unemployment. Estimating a traditional VAR with these variables would mean using frequency conversion to convert all the monthly variables to quarterly, losing a huge amount of fidelity. To estimate a mixed frequency VAR, we must be on the page of the lowest frequency, in this case, the quarterly page. We click on Quick, Estimate VAR to bring up the VAR estimation dialog, and then we change the VAR type dropdown to mixed frequency. In the endogenous variables box, we enter the names of the variables on the current page. In our case, that is GDP. We then specify the lags of the VAR. We'll use three. We enter variables with other frequencies or pages in the high frequency variables box. We specify them as the name of the page, monthly in our case, followed by the names of the variables, inflation, IP, and unemployment. On the left, we can choose whether we want a classical U minus VAR estimated via least squares, or if we want to use a Bayesian VAR. To begin, we'll stick with the classical U minus. Clicking OK produces the VAR output. The output is the same as for a standard VAR, the only difference being the variables included. You can see that each of the monthly endogenous variables has been expanded into three separate endogenous variables, one for each month in a quarter. As GDP is quarterly, there is just a single endogenous GDP variable. Since this is essentially a standard VAR, all of eView's VAR tools are available, including forecasting, impulse responses, and variance and historical decompositions. We'll freeze the output so we can review it later. We can re-estimate the VAR using Bayesian methods by clicking on the Estimate button, and then changing the estimation type to Bayesian. Doing so enables the options on the Hyperparameters tab where we can change the hyperparameters of the prior using the Bayesian mixed frequency VAR. We'll leave the parameters at the default values. The Bayesian estimator requires an MCMC sampler to produce estimates of the posterior distributions. We can use the Options tab of the dialog to change some of the settings of the sampler, such as the number of draws, the number of initial draws to discard as burn-in, and the random number seed. 
The sampler can take a while to run, so for the purposes of this video, we'll set the number of draws to 10,000. Clicking OK starts the sampler, and after a few moments, EVs will produce the results. We can see that the results are slightly different from the new Midas approach, but not massively so. Once we've estimated with the Bayesian approach, the forecast and impulse response procedures change to allow Bayesian sampling rather than the classical approach. We'll view the impulse responses from our VAR. The first two tabs of the impulse response dialog are the same as with the standard classical VAR and should be familiar. We'll just analyse the responses of GDP. The final tab offers options specific to Bayesian VARs. The first option is the type of impulse response analysis we would like to perform. We can choose to perform classical impulse response analysis, which takes the results of the Bayesian VAR and pretends that they were estimated by classical means. For the classical method, we can either use the posterior error covariance matrix as the residual covariance, or we can calculate the empirical residual covariance from the residuals of the VAR at the coefficient posterior means. We'll select Bayesian sampling, which will run an MCMC chain to draw from the posterior distribution of the impulse responses. We can select the number of draws of the MCMC, as well as the burn-in proportion and the random seed. We'll keep these at their default values. We can also choose to discard draws which would result in an unstable VAR. On the right, we can choose to view distributional graphs of the responses, as well as opt to store each of the draws in a new work file page. We'll do both. Clicking OK produces our output. To start, we can see the response graphs of GDP to each of the monthly variables. We can also see the distribution of the responses at each period across the draws. If we wanted to do further analysis on the draws, we could switch to the new page we created and, for example, view the by statistics of the draws of the response of GDP to a shock in GDP.